So you've got your caravan, you've got your Generation 3 Starlink, you're all ready for your big lap. The trouble is Starlink, well, it's designed to run on 240 volts and it is quite power hungry. Now, what if there was a way to easily and seamlessly run your Generation 3 Starlink off 12 volt in a very power efficient way while also using the router that came with your Starlink system. There is a way and it couldn't be easier. This is Avert from Cowfish Technologies, the company behind the system. We're gonna step inside the van and he's gonna talk us through it. Okay, so I'm here with Avert from Cowfish Technologies. And the Cowfish, they're, uh, among other things, a caravan internet specialist. And if you're using the Gen 3 Starlink for your caravan, Cowfish has just come up with, well, it's an indispensable product, really. Avert, tell us about the Cosmo. Yeah, so the Cosmo is a 12 volt power supply for your Starlink Gen 3. Um, as most people know, Starlink, it's great for internet on the road but it needs to run off 240 volts, meaning you need to run your inverter. Um, lots of overheads, lots of power losses doing that. What we've come up with is a 12, way, a 12 volt power solution for Starlink that is simple plug and play. Plugs into the back of the router that you already get with Starlink. Um, no need to cut cables or do anything like that and just run it off your 12 volt battery system. But there is an important point of difference here that uh, Cosmo allows you to use the existing Starlink router that comes with your Generation 3 Starlink. That's right, that's right. No need to change the router, no need to buy another router or anything like that. Um, just convert everything to run off 12 volt. So while there are some products out there that require a 5G modem if you want to run it off your 12 volt power, um, what's the benefit here? because we're using the Starlink router. That's right. So what we've done with the Cosmo is to try and keep it as simple as we can and also as affordable as we can. For people that don't need 4G and 5G internet and they just want to run Starlink internet, they only need to convert the power supply to it um, and they don't need to cut cables or do any of the other hobby stuff that you see around. It's a simple power supply that is connected to your 12 volt battery system and then the same type of plug that Starlink uses that goes into the back of the router. Starlink router does all the work for you, it powers the dish, you use the same functionality on your phone with the Starlink app um, and that's where these other products can get a bit tricky as well because now you can't see everything on the Starlink app anymore and there's this more configuration work to do. So the bottom line is Avert, um, you can use your existing generation 3 Starlink router inside your caravan you can install the Cosmo which is just a straight plug and play how do we power up the Cosmo yeah so the Cosmo is hooked into your 12 volt battery system um, standard it comes with a cable that plugs into the Cosmo and is wired into your fuse panel we also have the option to connect an Anderson plug to it um, if you've already got an existing Anderson power supply it's as simple as that and a cigarette style plug as well yeah we'd also do a cigarette style plug um, that's for the Cosmo Mini Speaking of the Cosmo Mini, tell us about that and why people might consider the Cosmo Mini over the standard Cosmo. So the Cosmo Mini is for the Starlink Mini dish. It's a different dish where the router is built into the dish and it's a smaller form factor. It's got its own pros and cons as to why you would want to use the Gen 3 or the Mini. But the Cosmo Mini basically does the same thing as its big brother. It powers that Starlink Mini dish directly from 12 volts. It also makes sure that you don't have any power drive when you're trying to power your dish directly from the battery um, because most of the time the cable's too long or you'll see a voltage drop and your dish will power off and reboot again. With Cosmo Mini, plug and play, you don't have those issues where everything is running at the correct voltage for your Mini dish. So with the Cosmo Mini, Avid, um, how are we connecting it to the Starlink Mini dish? Yeah, so the Starlink Mini is a slightly different configuration compared to your full-size Starlink. Um, the Starlink Mini dish has got the Wi-Fi unit built inside of it, so we don't need to run data cables, we only need to run a power cable. What we've done for the Starlink Mini is we've developed the Cosmo Mini. The Cosmo Mini reuses the cable that you get with your mini dish. You simply unplug that from the 240 volt wall adapter and that plugs into our Cosmo Mini. Um, because the Wi-Fi is built into the dish though, the Cosmo Mini and the Starlink Mini, in my opinion, are more for your rooftop tenting and camper trailer experiences where you're surrounded by canvas, not when you're in a caravan surrounded by a fair bit of metal that can actually block the Wi-Fi signal.
Okay, so talk to me about the options. Um, can I just buy the Cosmo on its own if I want to, if I've got all my own cables or I want to rig up my own RJ45 setup or anything? Yes, definitely. So Cosmo is offered in two packages. You can either get it as a unit itself, the Cosmo, or you can get the Cosmo Premium. The Cosmo Premium includes the Cosmo, of course, but it also comes with a weatherproof connection option and a bracket for the Starlink router. Okay, so tell me about the weatherproof connection options. Yes. People have to run the Starlink cable still from the dish to the router um, and you can either do that by leaving your window open and enjoying the comfort inside with some flights or have a weatherproof solution to bring the cabling or the data inside and this needs to be weatherproof not only when you're not using it but most importantly when it is in use so you shouldn't just use a standard RJ45 connection what we've developed is a weatherproof connection that goes on the outside of the caravan that comes with an integrated cap and a silicon ring to make it weatherproof and dustproof that sits on the outside and then a plug that has the Starlink cable feed into it. And again, it's plug and play. There's no need to cut a cable and get an electrician to solder something on or make it very complex and difficult. All we have to do is undo the fitting that we've got here pull it apart basically in its components, feed the Starlink cable through the three sections, and then when you screw that back together, it is now weatherproof when that's connected and weatherproof when you're not in use. Okay, so you mentioned a router bracket. Uh, tell me about that. Yes, so that also comes in the premium kit. The Starlink router itself doesn't have any mounting points. So it'll just sit in the cabinet where you're gonna mount, where you're gonna put the Cosmo and rattle around as you're driving. We've developed a um, router bracket for it that screws onto the back wall of the cabinet or to the base of the cabinet where the router clips in place. Easy to unclip so if you use your Starlink at home as well as in the caravan you simply unclip the router take it inside with your dish. And that router bracket I've got to say looks pretty pretty right because when I saw it for the first time mounted to the wall in the caravan I actually thought it was provided by Starlink. That's right we've tried to make it as neat as we can match the colour as well so it's a nice finish. Okay, Avit, so I've got my Generation 3 Starlink. I want to have it set up in my caravan. I've got the Cosmo. I'm, I'm a pretty good DIYer. Uh, I should be able to do that. It's fairly straightforward, I gather. It is fairly straightforward. So the manual's online with the specifications on how to install it, but basically it's as simple as mounting the Cosmo unit onto the wall close to where you're going to mount the Starlink um, router and connecting the unit to 12 volt, um, either using bare end cables if you're wiring it straight into your fuse panel or an Anderson style plug. The other thing that you would like to do, of course, is run the cabling for the router from the inside to the outside. Um, we've spoken about the weatherproof fitting on the outside. You also get a fitting for on the inside of the caravan so that you get a nice RJ45 connection and you get the cabling to run from the one point to the other. Offer it in a one meter option or in a six meter option depending on where you're going to mount the outside point compared to the inside point. And would you normally recommend that if someone's buying a new caravan to have it pre-wired uh, at the factory? Oh, definitely. It is a lot easier to do as they build the vans because, as you know, they built the vans from the inside out. So before the final walls come in, having all your wiring pre-done, um, even if people opt to only go for a what we call a Starlink ready kit, where your caravan is made Starlink ready with all the data and internet cables, um, and you can then opt later on if you wanted to run it off 240, off 12 or through Cosmo, or through something like our Van Connect. It sounds to me like the most challenging part of installing you know, this system is drilling a hole through the wall of your caravan and not hitting a stud. That's usually the cringe part, especially when you've just paid for it and it's brand new without a mark on it. Putting a drill bit to it can be a bit daunting. So talk to me about the benefits in terms of power loss running it this way. Yes, so power loss depends on the size of the inverter. The bigger the inverter, the bigger the overheads are. Um, caravans typically now come with like 2,000, 3,000 watt inverters, which is fantastic for your aircon, your microwave, your kettle, because they all need a lot of power. Cosmo and Starlink on the other hand, it runs at that 150 watt um, power section. That means when you turn your big inverter on, you're already burning an amp by just turning on the inverter. And then you've got all the losses from converting 12 volt to 240 volt in the inverter. But then again, in a Starlink power brick, to turn DC or AC voltage back into DC voltage. Mm. So we can eliminate all of those voltage drops or all of those power drops with the Cosmo unit. 
So tell me how much power the Cosmo unit draws. The draw for Starlink depends on the usage of the dish. Um, when you're doing a speed test, for instance, it's sending and receiving heaps of data and the power can spike up to about 10 amps. Um, when it's sitting there on the normal use when you're doing some web browsing and on Facebook and that sort of stuff, it can sit at three and a half amps. Um, the Cosmo unit is rated up to 400 watts, so it got access capacity to um, cover all of your power needs for Starlink. So how many volts does the Starlink dish draw? Yeah, the dish is 57 volts. Um, so what we actually do in here is we upscale 12 volt to 57 volt to power that dish. So this is probably the most power efficient way of running Starlink, whether you're in Lawn Hill National Park or you know, you're doing the Gib River Road. That's exactly right. The dish itself will use whatever the dish will use um, for your connection. It is all about eliminating all of your other power losses between your battery and your Starlink system. And the most efficient way to do all that is with our Cosmo. So you've got your Generation 3 Starlink, you've got your caravan, and you want to be online when you're off-grid in the most power-efficient manner. This is the product to look at. Avert, thanks for your time. No worries. Thanks, Max.